Welcome to the first video of Electrical Engineering 525 Antennas. What we're going to do in this video is calculate the radiation fields for a current distribution. And we're going to do this using the procedure, as, as is said here in the first line, we're going to be using the procedure that is outlined in section 2.4.4. So, as background material for this video, you should read up to and including that section. The uh, preceding sections will give you uh, background material so that you'll understand more why, we'd, why we would want to calculate the radiation fields and the general idea of how we have obtained the formulas that will be used in uh, conducting this derivation and then in uh, section 2.4.4 itself you'll see how this is done for uh, one particular current distribution and uh, in this uh, video we'll see how to calculate the radiation fields for another current distribution and then you should expect on the uh, quiz uh, on our first quiz uh, that you will be asked still a third uh, a different current distribution so um, you should follow along with this procedure and uh, note any questions that arise so that you can uh, address those uh, questions in class so again then uh, what we're going to be doing here is using the procedure outlined in section 2.4.4 and that is on page uh, 44 of your text and we're going to use that procedure to find the radiation fields for this current distribution J sub Z is equal to I naught for Y prime equals 0 Z prime equals 0 and the magnitude of X prime is less than or equal to L over 2 and 0 everywhere else now let's make sure we understand exactly what this is in your uh, book, the example that they consider is a Z-directed current source located along the Z-axis. Well, this is simply a Z-directed current source located along the X-axis. We know it's Z-directed because we see that this is J sub Z, and we know that it lies along the X-axis because it says that the current is zero everywhere except for where y prime is equal to zero, z prime is equal to zero, and the magnitude of x prime is less than or equal to L over two. So that just describes that portion of the uh, x-axis where x prime is between negative L over two and L over two, and of course y prime and z prime uh, since it's on the x-axis, y prime and z prime are both zero. So, once again, this is a current uh, distribution. It's located along the x-axis, but it's pointing in the z direction. And so, uh, here, this says, um, just once again to emphasize the point, note that this is a z-directed current source extending along the x-axis. So now all we have to do is to go through the procedure uh, that is outlined on page 44 of your text. And it's actually fairly straightforward, but I do want to make sure that you understand the details of it so that you would be able to go through this procedure for another uh, current source, which is what you'll be asked to do on the first quiz. So the first step is to find A, the vector magnetic potential. excuse me, a magnetic vector potential. So um, A, uh, in using the formula from your book, which is appropriate for finding the radiation fields, A is equal to mu times E to the minus J beta R over four pi R times integral over V prime of J E to the J beta R hat dot R prime dV prime. 
Now remember that V prime is the volume where your current distribution is located. The prime coordinates are the coordinates referring to your source, which is your current source, and the unprime coordinates are the coordinates referring to where you want to evaluate the field. So in this case the field is A. So we want to evaluate A at a location R, but to do that we need to integrate over um, the prime coordinates, so our prime coordinates, and specifically we want to integrate over the volume V prime. Now in this case we said that we had a line current source that was distributed along the x-axis and so that can be written in this way J and oh and by the way the line current source is Z directed so the Z hat here takes care of the Z directed part of the line source and the delta Y prime and delta Z prime are here just to emphasize that this uh, current source has no extent in either the y prime direction or the z prime direction it only extends in the x prime direction and that part is given here <coughs> it's equal to i naught so it's a it has a constant uh, magnitude between x prime equals negative l over 2 and x prime equals l over 2 and it's zero everywhere else so when we substitute When we substitute this formula for J into this integral, what will happen is that, okay, the, this integration over V prime uh, could be understood as an integral, integral uh, as X prime goes from negative infinity to infinity as y prime goes from negative infinity to infinity and as z prime goes from negative infinity to infinity. But when we substitute this in to the integrand here, because of the delta function in y prime and the delta function in z prime, those two integrals just disappear. We obtain one from both of those integrals, so we don't see them anymore. And so this can be, this integral here for A can be written more compactly as A equals mu e to the minus j beta r over 4 pi r times the integral, uh, and the only integral left is the x prime integral, <coughs> and x prime is going from negative L over 2 to L over 2, and in that region, as is said here, in that region, um, uh, the value is, uh, of the current density is I naught, so we have, uh, and don't miss this z hat here, so we have z hat, i naught, and then the, uh, we bring down this other term from the integrand, e to the, j to, beta, e to the j beta r hat dot, and notice that in this case, r prime, now remember, that's the location of the point in your current distribution. Well, the current distribution here, again, is all along this um, x-axis, and so the uh, r prime vector, which would normally be x prime x hat plus y prime y hat plus z prime z hat, well, since y prime and z prime are both zero, that just becomes here, as we see, x prime x hat. So now that we've substituted that into the integrand and we've gotten rid of the y prime and z prime integrals, now we're ready to begin uh, doing some work to evaluate this integral. So we can, as we come down to the next line, uh, z hat of course is a constant so it can be pulled out of the integral. i naught is also a constant so it can be pulled out of the integral. Uh, the rest of this here that's outside of the integral stays outside of the integral and we're left 
with simply the integral from minus L over 2 to L over 2 of e to the j beta. Now r hat here is the same thing as um, it's, a, it's a unit vector in the r direction. So you could think of it as being x, x hat plus y, y hat plus z, z hat all divided by the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Alternatively, you could think of it as x, x hat plus y, y hat plus z, z hat all uh, divided by r, just which where r, this is the scalar r, which is the magnitude of the vector r. <coughs> and finally, uh, you could also think of it as since x is equal to r sine theta cosine phi and y is equal to r sine theta sine phi and z is equal to r cosine theta, we could think of this as r uh, as, as x hat times r sine theta cosine phi plus y hat times r sine theta sine phi plus z hat times r cosine theta all divided by r and of course when we divide by r then all the r's in the numerator go away and so we finally would get this term right here sine theta cosine phi x hat plus sine theta sine phi y hat plus cosine theta z hat that is a completely general expression this is always valid for r hat so you can remember that in the future you can always use this formula for the unit vector in the r direction and then we bring down the dot x prime x hat term uh, that's also in the exponent and also of course bring down dx prime Now, this dot product that we have in the exponent of the integrand uh, is really quite easy because um, y hat dotted with x hat is zero, and likewise z hat dotted with x hat is zero. And of course, x hat dotted with x hat is one. So when we carry out this dot product here in the exponent of the integrand, uh, we simply get e to the j beta x prime sine theta cosine phi. Here's the sine theta and cosine phi, and here is x prime. And so when we, uh, the, and that's the only term that survives from the dot product. So we have this uh, expression here for a. A is equal to z hat times i naught mu e to the minus j beta r over 4 pi r times the integral from minus L over 2 to L over 2 of e to the j beta x prime sine theta cosine phi dx prime. Now, although this may look a little bit complicated, it's actually uh, quite a simple expression because it almost has the form of uh, integral of e to the u du. The only thing that we're lacking for the du is, see, here we have j beta beta x prime sine theta cosine phi that's what we're thinking of as u and so du then wouldn't be simply dx prime but it would be j beta dx prime times sine theta cosine phi so what we can do is multiply on the inside here by j beta sine theta cosine phi and when we do that, of course, we have to also divide by j beta sine theta cosine phi. And you see that here in the next line here. We have a j beta sine theta cosine phi in the denominator. Everything else here, we have just brought down from the previous line. And now that we've divided by j beta sine theta cosine phi, we can understand that we have a j beta sine theta cosine phi here in in the integrand and so then we do have exactly the expression the form e to the u du and of course integral of e to the u du is simply e to the u 
So we have e to the j beta x prime sine theta cosine phi, and that is evaluated from minus L over 2 to L over 2. And, and again, that's x prime that is varying from minus L over 2 to L over 2. And so in the next line here, uh, that's all we, well, that's the only thing we do is to go ahead and evaluate that term in the numerator. So everything else, just bring down z hat i naught mu e to the minus j beta r over 4 pi r. We bring down the denominator term j beta sine theta cosine phi. And then in the numerator, we will get, uh, when we uh, evaluate at the upper limit of x prime equals positive L over 2, we will get e to the j beta positive L over 2 sine theta cosine phi. And then uh, we subtract what we get at the lower limit. And when we, uh, at the lower limit, when we set x prime equal to negative L over 2, we will get e to the minus j beta L over 2 sine theta cosine phi. The, the negative L over 2, I just took the negative out front here. Okay. Now, this form in the numerator might look uh, familiar to you because it's of the form of uh, e to the j gamma, let's say, e to the j gamma minus e to the minus j gamma. And we know from the Euler formulas that e to the j gamma minus e to the minus j gamma is simply 2j sine gamma. So here we have 2j sine of beta L over 2 sine theta cosine phi. That, that numerator term is the same as 2j sine beta L over 2 sine theta cosine phi. And again, this is from the cosine, excuse me, from the Euler formula uh, for the sine and cosine. Everything else we just bring down from the previous line as you can see. Now, notice at this point that these two j's uh, could be canceled out, and we will do that is when we go to the next line. But another thing to notice is that we have a form here that's um, very suggestive. We have sine of a term divided, it's almost divided by that term. See, we have beta L over 2 sine theta cosine phi, and here we have beta sine theta cosine phi. So as we go from this line to the next line, in addition to canceling these j's, we will multiply top and bottom by L over 2 so that we will have exactly the form sine u over u. So again, going to the next line, we're going to cancel the j's and multiply top and bottom by L over 2. So all of this just gets brought down to the next line as it is. The J's get canceled. You see there's no J's here in the top or bottom uh, in this next line. We multiply the top by L over 2, and we multiply the bottom by L over 2. And uh, this L over 2 will combine with this 2 to just give you L, which we'll bring down right here. Everything else will be brought down right here. And then we're left with sine of beta L over 2 sine theta cosine phi divided by beta L over 2 sine theta cosine phi. Now, if you wished, you could go ahead and write that. Uh, you, you recognize this term. This is the cinch or hyperbolic sine of beta L over 2 sine theta cosine phi. And that would be a way that you could write A a little bit more compactly. But um, in the very next line, uh, we're going to be doing some uh, cancellation, uh, and, and so it really, uh, to be honest, it uh, is more convenient to just leave this in this form, this uh, sine u over u type of a form, rather than writing that in the more compact uh, form as the hyperbolic sine of u. But this concludes the first step and what is by far uh, the most complicated uh, step of this procedure. Now the second step is to find the electric field. After all, remember that our goal was to find the radiation fields 
and now that we have found the magnetic vector potential we're ready to find those fields and it's actually really straightforward to do that since J is entirely Z directed in this problem the formula for E is very simple and just written as this now again this is for E in the uh, this is the radiation field the radiation part of E and it's just given as J omega sine theta times AZ that's the Z component of A and this is in the theta direction so we have to multiply this by theta hat now again if J had other components other than a Z component if it were not entirely Z directed then we would have to back up and use the the more complicated formula expressing the relationship between E and A but in this kind of a problem where uh, and, and by the way for the quiz problem that you'll have on this it will be a Z directed source you, so you don't have to worry about that but if you ever did have a uh, source that was not entirely z-directed then you would need to go to the more general formula this one this formula here is uh, what you get taking into account the fact that J is entirely z-directed so E is equal to J omega sine theta AZ and it's in the theta hat direction and so if we come down to this next line then here's the theta hat we bring that down and then the J omega sine theta, we bring that down, and now AZ, well, here is A right up here, and this is uh, Z hat, so all of this, all that follows, is AZ. It's just the Z component of A. And so we <coughs> write that down right here. Um, I naught L mu e to the minus J beta R over 4 pi R times the sine of beta L over 2 sine theta cosine phi divided by beta L over 2 sine theta cosine phi. And then, uh, as I mentioned just a moment ago, we see that this sine theta here will cancel with the sine theta here, and that's why we didn't go ahead and write the A as the cinch, because if we had write, written A as cinch, or also called hyperbolic sine, if we had written that as, uh, in that way, um, it wouldn't have been so obvious that we could cancel these sine theta terms. So anyway, here we cancel the sine theta in the top and the bottom, and so we're left with the, this um, relatively straightforward equation for E, which is theta hat j omega i naught l mu E to the minus j beta r over 4 pi r times the sine of beta l over 2 sine theta cosine phi divided by beta L over 2 cosine phi. And that concludes the second step. So as you can see, the second step of this procedure is much uh, faster than the first step. And then finally, uh, and this one will be um, just as quick as that, uh, we find H, and this, now this formula is always going to be true in the, in the radiation field. Uh, and finding the radiation field, this formula is always true, that H will be 1 over eta times R hat cross E. So if we take 1 over eta times R hat cross this E, we will get this, and here I mean, there's, there's nothing to this except for just rewriting this expression for E right here. And notice that um, R hat cross theta hat R hat you know is the uh, unit vector in the R direction theta hat is the unit vector in the theta direction and R hat cross theta hat is just phi hat so we have phi hat here and then uh, 1 over eta you see here eta in the denominator and then the j omega uh, mu i naught and l that all comes down here and then the e to minus j beta r over 4 pi r, that term is there. And then the uh, sine beta L over 2 sine theta cosine phi divided by beta L over 2 cosine phi is right here. And, and this uh, expression is perfectly acceptable for H, but we could write this just a little bit more compactly by noting that eta is omega mu over beta and so if we wrote omega mu over beta here for eta, then the omega mu in the top 
with cancer with the omega mu in the bottom and we and the beta in the denominator of the denominator would come up to the numerator and so we finally get this slightly more compact form of phi hat times j beta i naught l times e to the minus j beta r over 4 pi r sine of beta l over 2 sine theta cosine phi divided by beta l over 2 cosine phi. And that concludes this calculation. Those are the radiation fields. Here's H and here's E. Those are the radiation fields for the current source given here um, at the top of this problem. And once again, this current source differs from the current source uh, that was considered in uh, the book only in the respect that it is distributed along the x-axis rather than along the z-axis. And um, I encourage you to do two things, to, to look carefully and make, make sure you understand all these steps uh, that was involved, the, the, all the steps that were involved in this procedure, but then to, to try to step back and get a big picture uh, by comparing the final results we obtained here with the final results obtained in the book. And I think that that will help you to see that actually this is quite a simple calculation overall once you understand how uh, the two results um, compare to each other. And so, uh, once again then, for the, for the quiz or test for this material, we will have still another uh, Z-directed um, line source, and um, uh, you will be asked to calculate uh, the radiation fields for that. And so that uh, is it. That concludes uh, the first uh, video, and uh, thanks, and I will see you in class.